Hello, in this video, we will talk about the Plotly dash Python package. Now, I, I recently came across this particular package and it looks really promising. That's why I was thinking like I will just share this, share my findings with you all. So, so in this particular video, let's talk about very brief about what it is and its basic architecture. Maybe from next video onwards, we will try to implement some solutions regarding this one or try to understand deeper into it, into this particular Python package. Okay. So, so what is Plotly Dash? So as I said, it's a open source Python library. Now, what basically it, it the main functionality it is having, it's basically an UI library for creating analytical web applications. So basically you can fully build a website just by writing a Python codes over there. Okay. So you, whatever, like say, let's say to write a website, you need at least the HTML, CSS and JavaScript to write, right? So in, the, in, in this particular package. So what they have done is they basically written Python classes on top of those HTML elements or different CSS stuff. Okay. So that you do not need to write any kind of HTML or CSS. Like you need to know what are the different CSS properties are, but you do not need to write any kind of CSS files over there, or you do not need to write any kind of JS files over there as well. Okay. So we'll see that in future videos as well. And Another important stuff about this particular Python package is called the reactive programming model. So it's basically built upon the reactive programming model. We will come back to this particular idea very soon. So let us talk more about this one. And it's basically used by data scientists or though in those projects where you, you are, you will basically implementing an AI or ML based solution with like mm, predominantly py Python is used over there. Okay. So it is very helpful in those cases and mainly like whenever you want to build some idea very rapid way, either you can use this particular framework or even if you know Django, that is also you can use it over there, but Django is like more sophisticated framework. So this one is basically like a very lightweight framework over there because if you see the architecture over here, like the web server is basically built upon flask. So we, if you are from the Python background, so you already know like what flask is, is basically a lightweight web framework and the other two stuff like the front end and the data visualization, because the projects where we use mainly the email or mainly the machine learning visualization. So we use a lot of charts over there, right? So that charts are basically implemented with plotly.js. It's a very famous open source charting tool and the front end has been completely written in react, but you do not need to write any kind of JS code over there. As I said, you'll be implementing all this stuff into Python. That's why it is becoming more important and more interesting as well. And let's, let's talk about reactive programming a bit. Now let's say we are working on a Excel spreadsheet. So Excel is basically a very good example of the reactive programming. So let's say I, in, in this particular column C, in this particular cell, I written a formula, something like this one. Let's say I want to take some of whatever coming over here in the in the A1 and also whatever coming over here in the B1. Okay. So currently the sum is zero because I have not provided any values over here. Now let's say I have given six over here and seven over here. So what is happening over here is whatever based on the value, my, this, this sum is changing automatically. That means somehow this particular sum has been hooked or basically getting a streamed data and accordingly it is taking some action. So whenever your input is getting change, this is also automatically getting change as well, because that particular information has been sent automatically by Excel to this particular formula. So that's why it is getting changed as well. Okay. So, so this is a classic example of reactive programming. So in dash, instead of this values, it will be something like a button click 
or something or basically an interaction with the ui element so in reactive programming basically your program is listens to a data stream and accordingly it takes some actions over there right now you can create data streams from anything like let's say if i just wanted to if i just click a button i just wanted to do something right so that portion is automatically handled in dash using a callback so we'll talk more about this callbacks and all in future videos but this is like the dash programs are actually based on this kind of reactive programming so as i said for the reactive programming basically dash provides a simple reactive decorator for binding custom data analysis code to your dash user interface it's basically a like from the user interface you want to you have just perform something like some actions some events and based on that you you need to handle something like you need to perform some action over there like button click and all right so dash dash has provided like a kind of reactive decorators which is nothing but the callback as i said okay now let's say like for an example like when an input element has changes like when you select an item from the drop down or drag a slider so dash decorator provides our python code with the new value of the input so that for for each and every changed value you do not need to write any new code over there okay it will be automatically handled by dash over there so hopefully we got a very brief idea about what dash is and it's very basic ar architecture maybe in future videos if we go deeper into it we may talk about some more advanced level stuff as well so hopefully this video is helpful see you in the next video in the next video we will start with simple dash program architecture maybe the how to write a dash program and then slowly take it forward